there are three main ways to get into Dundas from Hamilton. Two of those routes are quite safe, and of those two routes, one of them is less isolated and it is also a more direct way to get into the downtown area. That route is Coots Drive. Let's get cycling. We begin at the intersection of Coots Drive and York Road slash York Street. Uh, I say slash York Street because there is a sign a little ways down the road that actually says York Street. <laughs> But uh, at that intersection, it says road, so that is why I put road on this video. So, anyway, this section of Coots Drive, there's four lanes across. And I think we definitely could fit bicycle lanes in here. And I think it would be a good idea to have bicycle lanes. Typically, if you were to come from Hamilton into Dundas, once you got to Dundas Street, you would take Dundas and then go on to another side street, and then you would have to get to York and Hat. But I think if we were able to just have bicycle lanes on this section of road going to York, and then diverting the traffic to Hat, then that would be ideal. So here we are at the intersection of Dundas Street and East Street North. So if you were to come from Hamilton, uh, just be advised, you probably want to go down Dundas Street and not the section of Coots that we just traveled. So, a vast majority of Coots Drive has this trail. About 75% of Coots Drive has the trail. And because of that, it scores very high. The score that this road receives is a 97. So, that is very good. Obviously, there is some isolation issues. So if you were to travel to and from Hamilton and Dundas, this is probably your best route at the moment. There is also the hamilton Brantford Rail Trail, but that's even more isolated. And so if you don't like isolation, uh, you know, maybe that might not be your cup of tea. Here, there is traffic off to the side. So if there was ever any issue and you needed assistance, there is, you know, people driving by pretty much at all times of the day. The other way to get into Dundas from Hamilton is Osler. And I do think that that route needs to have a bicycle lane because you're not so isolated there. There's tons of houses, there's businesses, but uh, that's something for another day to talk about. Here we have a connection to Olympic Drive. Olympic Drive turns into York. It's kind of strange because, like, York comes at an intersection to Olympic Drive at a T intersection, but then takes over the rest of Olympic Drive. <laughs> York Road is quite weird. It, it zigzags all over the place. But, uh, yeah, so this is what we have here. You'll notice the power towers off to the side there. And there is obviously this hydro corridor. Um... Another thing that I will be talking about in a future video is we need to have more trails along our hydro corridors. And so the Dundas Mountain Hydro Corridor can bring you all the way from the escarpment edge to Coots Drive Trail. And that would be very nice to have. But yeah, this is... Uh... This is kind of what you see on a regular day. Uh, this is filmed during the summer, obviously. This is uh, a lot of my footage from now on is probably going to be a lot of summertime footage. I will be doing more footage that is seasonal. So at the time that this video comes out, it is autumn. So this is not what the trail currently looks like. But it does seem to be a well-maintained trail. That being said, I have noticed issues where sometimes there's fallen trees and sometimes you have to get off your bike and go around a fallen tree. I've tried moving fallen trees before. Sometimes they're just way too heavy for one person. But um, yeah, it's it's quite nice. This section here is probably the steepest section. It's kind of hard to tell. But according to Google Maps, this is about a three degree incline. And uh, it's it's manageable. It's definitely manageable. Uh, it doesn't really feel like three degrees in the video, 
but uh, it is what Google Maps says, and that's uh, unfortunately what I have to score it by. That's my only way to find out accurate, or the, the most accurate that I can, uh, inclines and declines. After that, it kind of levels out. It's a little bit more steady. It's a average incline of 0 0.5 degrees from beginning to end and just a, a fairly short distance where it's about a, a three degree incline. This bridge here is west away. It connects to the McMaster University. Up ahead, where the stop signs are, are the slip lanes to get from Coots Drive to west away and west away to Coots Drive. Uh, this first stop sign, when traveling in this direction, you have to do a 180 look behind. Cars do travel quite fast. The opposite direction, the direction that the other cyclist was traveling, you have a much clearer view. But when traveling in this direction, you really need to stop and look behind you because those cars can just fly up that slip lane. It's a 90 degree turn, so hopefully they slow down a bit. But yeah, it's probably the most dangerous section. Up ahead, we have the connection to Sanders Boulevard, which has bicycle lanes, so that is very nice. Uh, we will be doing a video on Sanders Boulevard in the near future. But there's also this crosswalk to get into McMaster University, and this is probably my preferred route. Uh, if I want to get back into Hamilton, I usually go through the university and connect to King Street and then take King Street across the highway, and then you are in downtown Hamilton. Uh, you'll notice off to the side there is a trail that I have now exited off of. It does turn into a sidewalk, and where the sidewalk ends, uh, it's not an ideal spot that if you want to turn left or if you want to go straight through. So that is why I came off of that trail. So right about here is the sidewalk. Technically, you could come off it. Um, there isn't really any cutaways in the curb. So you'd have to like hop down and then get into this lane and it'd be very dangerous. So I did not score that section as part of the trail because there's a very good chance that you will continue on to Leland. Now, Leland is a fairly important street. It goes quite a far ways. There is an extension that we will be talking about uh, that I think the city should look into. But one of the good things about this is coming from Dundas, you can then join the Hamilton Brantford Rail Trail in a much more urban area. And it's actually, it's a decent alternative. Uh, actually, it's going to be the only alternative to get into Hamilton once the LRT starts being built. So just right here is the Hamilton Brantford Rail Trail. You turn left, that will bring you into Hamilton and drop you off at Aberdeen. So, uh, Leland scores a 59. Uh, it is a what I consider a narrow road. Uh, so the base score is a 60, and then with its bonuses and penalties, it ends up losing a point. And so it gets a 59, so it is a failing street. I think if we were to make this into a bike boulevard, that would be very good. We could definitely bring this up to the 70s, if not an 80. And Whitney is a very important street that can bring you to Main Street going up the escarpment to Ancaster. It's also the route that a bus goes down. And just up ahead, we have this forested area. And there's a little bit of a gap, and this is where another hydro corridor is. This is the Chadok Hydro Corridor, and it would be a prime spot to put a trail. In fact, it's mowed down that it's, it's quite easy to travel through. Obviously, in bad weather, this is not ideal, but we come out here on to the hydro corridor, and why don't we have a trail here? It goes all the way to... I forget what street it goes to, uh, but it, it goes all the way. Oh, it goes up to Emerson for sure. And it can go a little bit further and it joins up with Iona and Iona could connect to Wilson by a trail in the future. But of course that would 
require you going through the cemetery. It would be nice to have that sort of connection. Anyways, that is it for this video. I hope it was informative. Take care and stay safe. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters who are helping to make improvements to this channel.